prairies. What do you picture when you think of that word? Probably some happy little pioneer family forging a path through the wild frontier, or even the home Dorothy finds herself torn from when she makes her magical escape to the land of Oz. Whatever you think of, it's probably somewhere far west or a hundred years ago into the past with wide open spaces, roaming buffalo, and maybe even some spirited horses just yearning to live free. Media has certainly done its part in this romanticized, long ago portrayal of grasslands and those organisms that inhabit it. What you probably don't know is that prairies exist, or existed, more on that in a bit, right here in the Midwest. Tiny little ecological remnants hidden among the never-ending fields of corn and soy. It probably looks very different from what you picture when you think of prairies, but the ever-present threat of tornadoes is a common factor. Not that that bothers us locals. The Midwest is the home of the tall grass prairie, which sports abundant biodiversity and is naturally maintained through fire, where the disturbance diminishes the growth of hardwood trees, increases the enrichment of the soil through recycling of organic matter, and allows for the dispersal and germination of native seed. These rich soils, however, made it appealing to put the land to agricultural use, and the fire needed to maintain those ecosystems is poorly understood and justifiably feared by the public. Therefore, in the past few hundred years, land throughout the Midwest has changed from this to this. And tall grass prairies are now an endangered ecosystem. Where prairie once made up the majority of the Midwest and was even the continent's most widespread ecosystem, now only about 1% of original prairie remains. Fortunately, there has been a push in the biological and ecological community to conserve the remaining prairie remnants and even to try to restore used land back to a native ecosystem. With these restorations come hundreds of native species of grasses, forbs, and wildflowers that have become uncommon or threatened due to prairie's decline. One of these species is the prairie violet, or Viola petitifida. Many pollinator species, such as the threatened regal fritillary butterfly, depend on this plant for resources and reproductive purposes, much like the famous relationship between milkweed and monarch butterflies. Unfortunately, the establishment rates of Petitifida are extremely low in restored habitats due to its sensitivity to environmental conditions and low competitive ability against invasive species. Its seeds are also dispersed using the ballistic method. The capsule containing these seeds opens up and the seeds are squeezed and popped out. This method and their tiny size makes collecting seed difficult as well, exacerbating this establishment issue. Here at the Chicago Botanic Garden, I'm studying the germination of these violet seeds in order to help figure out in what conditions these seeds germinate best. This information is vital as it will allow land managers, researchers, and anyone working with the seed to provide the best conditions and allow for maximum germination, whether in the lab or within restored land. My project involves specifically studying the effects of short-term storage on seed germination. Oftentimes when collecting seeds, many people don't consider the effects of the conditions the seeds will be in only for a day or two. This can include leaving them in the car, the fridge, or just out on the counter. Considering seeds are often environmentally sensitive and many require cold stratification periods to overcome dormancy, these conditions are vitally important to germination. I recreated conditions with varying temperatures and humidities kept seeds collected from greenhouse violets in the storage treatment for 24 hours, then applied a GA treatment, plated, and placed the seeds in an incubator to check over the next three weeks. The results showed an interesting trend. Seeds from different greenhouses responded differently to the treatments, and the fact that the seeds responded to each treatment differently at all was huge. This implies that even conditions seeds are kept in for a day can impact whether it will germinate or not, and the environment the maternal plant was in may play an important role as well. With these findings, hopefully further research is conducted on super short-term storage conditions so that we can be able to restore these violets as well as tall grass prairies themselves.